we finish by going back to some biology basics from chapter one. There are two main types of cells, eukaryotic, cells that have a nucleus, and prokaryotic, cells that don't have a nucleus. In the first six videos of this chapter, we didn't bother distinguishing between eukaryotic genetics from prokaryotic genetics because we're all fundamentally the same. That commonness of genetic structure and process runs so deep that we're now able to take genes from one organism and stick, stick them into the chromosomes of completely different organisms. My son has type 1 diabetes. He injects insulin into his body every day. That insulin is human insulin, indistinguishable from the insulin my pancreatic cells produce. But his insulin is produced by E. coli bacteria. Those bacteria have the human insulin gene inserted into their chromosome. Well, that's remarkable in itself. But more re remarkable is that E. coli is able to read that human genetic information and understand it well enough to produce human protein. The only way that could happen is if E. coli bacteria use the same dictionary, the universal genetic code, as humans and all other organisms. The uniformity of genetic structure and process is pretty spectacular. But there are some differences in genetic structure and process. In this last video, we look at some of those differences. For eukaryotic cells, their chromosomes are linear. Our cells cap the ends of chromosomes with structures called telomeres. These prevent the ends of chromosomes from unraveling. The enzyme telomerase makes telomeres. When telomerase is functional, the chromosomes can maintain their entire lengths. When telomerase stops working, the ends of chromosomes get chopped off with each round of the somatic cell cycle. With more and more cell cycles, more and more of the ends of chromosomes get chopped off. At some point, critical genes get chopped in half. At that point, the cell may not be able to survive. Thus, the preservation of telomeres and the action of telomerase is essential for cell survival. We think that breakdown of our tissues as we age may be caused by the shutting down of telomerase. We also think that cancers can result from telomerase being turned on too much. Whatever the case, telomeres and telomerase are important in the lives of eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotes with circular chromosomes don't have ends, and therefore they don't have telomeres or telomerase. Another set of eukaryotic functions not found in prokaryotes is called post-transcriptional RNA editing. These processes happen after transcription but before translation. Three things happen. First, a chemically modified guanine called a methyl G is added to the 5' prime end of each mRNA. We call this the 5' prime methyl G cap. The 5' prime methyl G cap seems to be important in guiding the mRNA out of the nucleus and as a locating device for the small ribosomal subunit at the beginning of translation. A second form of post-transcriptional editing occurs on the other end of the mRNA. A whole bunch, 100 to 200, of adenines uh, are added to the 3' prime end of each mRNA. We call this the 3' prime poly A tail. We think the 3' prime poly A tail is sacrificial material to occupy the time of RNA digesting enzymes, which chomp up RNAs from the 3' prime end towards the 5' prime end. The third form of post-transcriptional editing is intron excision and exon splicing. Introns are parts of genes, but don't code for protein sequence. They're like gibberish in the middle of the genetic information. Introns need to be located and removed. The remaining protein coding regions, called exons, are then connected together to form the mature protein recipe. We don't know entirely why introns are present in eukaryotic genes, but there are a lot of those gibberish sequences in our genes. One hypothesis for the function of introns is called exon shuffling. In this scenario, introns can be removed in different combinations, 
such that the same gene can produce several different mRNAs with different combinations of exons connected together. You don't have to know each of the forms of exon shuffling shown in this picture. Just know that exon shuffling through variation in intron removal is one possible function for the presence of introns. This last slide is spectacular. We're biased into thinking that humans are supremely adapted, it's the pinnacle of life. But other organisms, like bacteria, are pretty good too. In this picture, we see both prokaryotic transcription, RNA production, and translation, protein production, going on simultaneously. In eukaryotes, transcription and translation have to be sequential, one after the other, because they occur in different locations in the cell transcription in the nucleus, and translation in the cytoplasm. The simultaneous transcription and translation of prokaryotes helps to make their genetic processes go much faster than in eukaryotes. That speed of process contributes to overall speed of cellular processes. Bacterial cells can reproduce every 20 minutes. Humans reproduce every 20 years. Bacteria are incredibly successful on our planet. The humans are incredibly successful too. We take fundamentally different strategies to achieve that success than do bacteria. Yet, we're built from a common set of structures and functions as bacteria. The diversity and unity of life. That is the study of biology.